Today, I'm gonna give you an overview on how to program for Facebook's Libra blockchain. All right, so you don't have to know anything about blockchain or Libra at all to get started. I'm gonna teach you everything today from scratch. So really quickly, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University, and if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe to this channel, click the like button down below. And if you're serious about learning how to build blockchain technology, you should join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So I want to give you a quick introduction to what Libra is and how it works. Okay, so Libra is a blockchain created by Facebook. It's a blockchain and a cryptocurrency. And the cryptocurrency is, let's just see here, a stable global cryptocurrency built on a secure network. Or at least that's the marketing pitch. So uh, what that means is Libra has a stable price. All right, so it's pegged to a currency. I believe it's the US dollar. So essentially that means that the price of Libra won't change. It's not volatile. It won't go up and down. So, uh, how does Libra work? Well, uh, let's look at a few things. So, it's a blockchain, right? Uh, and it's pegged as a stable currency with a reserve. So, essentially, there are assets uh, that are backed up to support the value. And that means that people can buy uh, and sell Libra from the reserve, and they're you know guaranteed to always be able to get it a certain value out of it. They don't have to go to an exchange and wait for it to you know hit a certain price or anything like that. So there's not there's not the same speculation involved like other cryptocurrencies that are more volatile, right? So let's talk about the blockchain itself. Well, the blockchain works a little differently. And then some blockchain you might be used to. It doesn't quite work the same as Bitcoin or Ethereum or anything like that. So why? Well, the blockchain uh, uses something called validators to uh, secure the network. So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to pull up a diagram here. On something like Bitcoin, uh, you have a network that's created of nodes, peer-to-peer -peer nodes that all talk to one another, right? And whenever, uh, you know, we're creating transactions, anytime someone sends cryptocurrency from one person to another on the network, you know, they have to connect to a node. And whenever the transaction goes through, all these nodes talk to one another, right? And they reach consensus on whether the transaction, uh, you know, is correct and goes through and stuff like that, right? So, uh, Bitcoin uses something called a proof of work, which is a consensus algorithm, all right? And proof of work has miners. So the miners basically uh, solve a cryptographic puzzle and the first one to solve it uh, mines the block and, you know, completes the transaction and it goes through. So essentially like, you know, if I want to send you cryptocurrency, I have to s tell the Bitcoin network that I'm sending you cryptocurrency and whenever uh, the Bitcoin network uh, mines the transaction, then I get, you know, you get the cryptocurrency on the other side, all right? So that's how Bitcoin works as a proof of work blockchain. But um, Libra works a little bit differently. So Libra has validators instead of instead of miners, all right? So it has a different consensus mechanism where validators have to uh, basically hold a certain amount of Libra uh, currency in order to validate transactions on the network, okay? And so the validators replace the miners, and essentially, if I want to send you some Libra cryptocurrency, I create the transaction, it goes to the Libra network, and whenever uh, the validator uh, mines the block, then we know the transaction is complete, and you receive the cryptocurrency on the other side. All right, so that's how the currency works, that's how the blockchain works, it's a stable price cryptocurrency uh, on a network powered by validators. All right, so now let's start programming. What we're going to do is is set everything up on our computer so that we can talk to Libra and interact with it. We'll be able to do things like create accounts, create transactions, uh, mint coins, and you know send them to one another. All right, so I'll give you a quick diagram of what that looks like. Essentially, we're going to download everything on our computer that we need to connect our computer to the Libra blockchain. Okay, and what we're going to do is connect to an individual node on that network. And that's going to give us a connection that's going to work on behalf of the entire blockchain. Okay, that's what we're going to do in the first part. And then later I'll show you how to actually, you know, set up a Libra network on your own computer right here. And then we'll also talk about, you know, how to, uh, you know, connect to a Libra node either on your local machine or if you want to connect to a main network. Okay, so for now, what we're going to do is connect to a test network. Okay, so everything that we're going to do is not on a live main net or anything like that. So what is a test network? It's essentially an environment where we can, you know, play around. It's a sandbox. You know, all the Libra currency that we uh, create on this blockchain won't be worth any money or anything like that. And we don't have to worry about losing funds or compromising private keys or anything like that. Okay, so I'll show you how to get started. 
let's go to our terminal and you need to have git installed so that you can uh, clone the tools to connect to Libra. All right, so I'll show you uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, say git clone and clone this repository that's uh, maintained by Libra. So git clone, uh, this GitHub URL, Libra, Libra.git, okay? All right, that worked. Now let's enter into that directory like this. So we'll say CD Libra. All right. And then now uh, we need to run the dev setup. All right. So this is essentially a script. I'll just show you. All right. So you can see, uh, let's see here. So we can see there's some scripts inside of here. Like, uh, let's see, ls uh, scripts. All right. Let's do ls-l. Yeah, here we go. So dev setup, that's what we want to run. This is going to uh, configure our environment. So we'll work that like this. Say uh, scripts, dev setup. We'll say yes. All right, there we go. So I've done this before. So uh, you're going to see a lo much longer installer than I did uh, when I recorded it this time. Um, but essentially what this is going to do is install Rust. All right. So that's a dependency uh, for running Libra locally. And uh, you're going to get the Rust tool chain. It's going to install stuff like CMake. And it's also going to install Go. So there's a lot of different system dependencies that get installed whenever you run this. So you really want to make sure this is successful. Uh, if you have any errors, um, I would just try pasting in the exact error message into Google. You'll probably see um, you know, some, some issues. And you also can find some troubleshooting guides here on the Libra documentation. Um, you know, if you have any issues there, just go to this troubleshooting page on my, uh, my first transaction under the docs section. Okay. All right. So once that's done, now what we want to do is actually connect to the test network. So if you look back inside this, you know, scripts directory, uh, we can see a CLI directory. So CLI, all right, and inside of here, there is a start testnet script. That's the one we want to run. So let's say uh, you know, scripts instead of dev setup, say CLI. Sorry, I'm going to bump this up in case it's coming off the screen. CLI uh, start CLI testnet. All right. Oh, and actually really quickly, before we do that, you need to uh, check out to the testnet branch. So say git checkout testnet. All right, now let's uh, run the script again. So scripts, CLI, start CLI testnet. All right, so you should see uh, some install uh, messages, some compilation messages, and whenever they're finished, you will be connected. All right, whenever that's finished successfully, you should see the command line interface pop up. Okay, you can also see this message uh, successfully connected to validator. You can see that here, all right. So this will be an interactive console that we can use to uh, interact with the Libra blockchain via a node uh, on our local computer. Okay, so there are a few commands that are exposed to us and we can see the explanations here. Uh, account, so that will let you do things on behalf of an individual user on the blockchain. Uh, query, we can uh, ask you know information about the blockchain. Transfer, this will allow us to send cryptocurrency, uh, Libra cryptocurrency between uh, addresses. And also, we got some help commands and quit that will allow us to quit the console. So let's play around with some of these. All right, the first thing that we'll do is actually uh, create a new account. All right, so account is like a wallet is like a username. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that like this. Let's say uh, account create. And this has given us a new address, all right? So this is a representation of like the public key, right? So on the blockchain, uh, whenever you connect to it, uh, your address is sort of like your username uh, or the public key. And the private key is sort of like your password, okay? And Libra stores these uh, in an index. And I'll show you how that works in a second. So this is essentially account zero, a zero-based index, just like an array in many programming languages. Essentially, the first one is zero, the second one is one, the third one is two, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So that's the first account. Now we can go ahead and create a new one. We can say account create. All right, so we're going to create two accounts so that we can uh, mint some cryptocurrency for this account and then send it to the second one. All right, so we can see that when the second one was created, uh, this is account number one, right? Again, so zero based index. Now let's go ahead and add some coins to the first wallet. All right, so we'll do it for this account. This is account zero in the list. Uh, we'll do it like this. We'll say account uh, mint. We'll say... Uh, Account zero, like this first one. Now let's do 150 coins. 150, hit enter. All right, so it's minted uh, 150. At least the request was submitted. And we can check the balance to see that it was finished. Okay, so we'll say query, right? This command right here, query. Query uh, balance 
of account zero. Okay. All right, so the balance is 150. So the mint request actually finished. All right. And also, I should mention, you know, these commands here are letting us to write this with the move programming language. That's the programming language you know, that's used for uh, interacting with Libra and writing scripts and stuff like that. So I'll show you in a few minutes how you can write your own custom scripts with the Libra programming language for the blockchain as well. Now we can query uh, the balance of the second account. So we'll say uh, query balance uh, one. And it's zero, that's what we expect, because whenever we create a new account, there's no coins in it yet. So let's actually transfer some coins from the first account to the second one. All right, so we'll say uh, transfer. There's gonna be a few arguments here. So we're gonna transfer from the first account, all right, zero, uh, to the second account, so account one, all right. And then how many do we wanna transfer? Let's do uh, 10 coins, hit enter. So it's transferring, and the tr it says the transaction was submitted to the validator. All right, that's going to be the node on the network that actually uh, finalizes the transactions. So let's uh, do let's follow the instructions here. It says for the transaction status, run query uh, transaction. You know this right here, and uh, see the status. Okay, so this would be like if we wanted to see if the transaction had finished yet. So let's do that. So we say query. TXN underscore ACC uh, SEQ uh, zero zero and fetch events will just say true. All right, so hit enter and there we go. So it shows uh, all this output right here. Uh, this is essentially the transaction. So, you know, the blockchain is made up of transactions and we can see the uh, information about the signed transaction, the one that we submitted from the account. So here's the raw transaction. Here's the sender. That was the account that we sent it from. Um, the payload. So this is essentially the address that it's going to. It looks like, I think that's correct. Uh, max gas amount, gas unit price, expiration time, uh, the public key, and here's the actual uh, signature, okay? So there's some other stuff inside here, like the events, and you can go browse this around, read the documentation to learn all the details of what's inside this transaction hash. But that's the uh, that's how you inspect it. All right. So now let's uh, check the balance of account number two and see if the uh, currency was actually transferred. So let's say query balance account one, and now it should be ten. There we go. It's ten coins. So let's query balance uh, account zero. And it is uh, reduced by 10. So it was 150 and now it's 140. Awesome. All right, so congratulations. You have uh, just gotten your hands dirty with the Move programming language. Uh, you've connected to the Libra test network on your computer locally, all right? So now you're a Libra developer. I want to show you a few more things. So let's exit out of the uh, console like this. We just type quit, hit enter, all right? And the next thing I want to show you is actually how to set up a uh, Libra network yourself. So essentially, you could have your own copy of Libra either running on your computer, or you could set up a copy of a Libra network uh, for your own purposes, okay? So uh, you do that like this. You do with this command uh, called cargo run dash p Libra swarm uh, dash dash and then dash s, all right? Now, I had a few issues with this the first time I tried it. Uh, I believe it had to do with my Rust configuration locally. Um, also, I should note that you need to be on Mac or Linux in order to do this. But I had to essentially install Rust up. So I'll show you like that while this is uh, setting up. I did like brew, uh, install, Rust up. All right, I've already got it. So this is homebrew. I'm installing Rust up. So I'm not going to install this again. Uh, but whenever that's set up, you need to do uh, Rust up. Uh, init. All right, so I had to do this. And then uh, I also had to uh, fix my path variable, which is another issue. So I'll show you that really quickly. I had to say uh, export. Sorry, I'll pull this up in case it's come off the screen here. There we go. I had to do export uh, path equals uh, home dot cargo slash bin. Uh, path. Okay, so I had to do that in order to update my path variable so that I could find cargo in order to properly uh, run this uh, operation here. 
cargo run dash p libra swarm all right so uh this is going to take a while for this whole thing to set up so i'm not going to wait for this but that is how you set up a private libra network uh locally on your own machine like i said you can set this up to run your own libra network if you wanted to do that as well and now i want to show you how to run a libra client so you can connect to any libra network so if you wanted to connect to a test network uh some network that you set up or the main net you do that like this say cargo run dash p client oh, sorry client dash dash bin uh client dash and then you can have some options which we're going to skip uh we'll say host you would pass in the host of the uh node that you want to connect to and then uh if you had a validator set file you would specify like this you say dash dash validator set file and you would pass in the validator set file here all right so that's how you would connect to uh, a libra node yourself or libra client so i'll pull this up documentation here uh, if you want to read more about this this is developers.libra.org forward slash docs reference libra, libra cli and this will give you more information on how to uh, run your own libra client uh, connect to any um, libra network etc etc okay all right, so there's lots of different things here that you can browse if you want to. All right, now I want to walk you through uh, how to get started with Move. So like I said, Move is the programming language used for Libra blockchain. And essentially, this is going to be a scripting language that you can use to run uh, little programs on the blockchain. All right, so it allows composable smart contracts and essentially has little scripts that you can write in order to do this. Okay, so um, here's an overview of Move. And here's examples of how you can write transaction scripts. All right. So you can see uh, this is a way to do stuff like a peer-to-peer -peer payment example. This is sort of just the long-winded way of sending transactions, right? You can see these here, all right? And then also uh, ways to do stuff like split payments. And, uh, you know, essentially this will do some on-demand stuff like uh, create a fresh account if one doesn't already exist, all right? And stuff like that. You can also do like stuff like writing modules, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of stuff you can do to play around with Libra. Now, if you want me to make another tutorial about how to, uh, you know, get more involved with the Move programming language, if you guys want to see more tutorials on how to use Libra, uh, just let me know. So I wanted to create this video as kind of an introduction, high level, uh, to show you how to use Libra, see if anybody else is interested on more tutorials and stuff like that. All right. So I hope you all like this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. And as always, if you want to learn how to become a highly paid blockchain developer, enjoy my free training on my website over at dapuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, till next time, thanks for watching DAP University.